How long did it say? I don't remember. 10 minutes? Oh! Back in the van. Today is a good day. We're headed to the big city of Anchorage to pick up the boss lady. She's flying in from Dutch Harbor. She's been away for three weeks on a work assignment. And I'm excited. We're prepping the van. It's springtime, so that means we can dewinterize this machine. That means we can uh, take out the winterization uh, fluids that we put in it. We can fill it with water and get it ready for spring and summer adventures in Alaska. I'll show you how we do that right now. So we're getting ready to dewinterize this van. That means taking it out of winter storage, putting it full of fluids, filling it full, full of water. And the way we do that is we, I keep all of my tools and dirty stuff in here, and that includes the water hoses that I need to fill up this van. This is our water fill station. And we have an outdoor shower that you can plug in a hose to. It goes right here, fills up our water tanks. I think it's a 30 gallon tank. That gives us enough water for many, many days. In the winter time, we drain these tanks, of course, because we don't want things to freeze. And when it's negative 40 out here, there's no way to keep those tanks from not freezing. So this thing is right now is filled with an antifreeze throughout the lines and the tank. And there's probably a little bit of that antifreeze in the tank. I have to pump all that stuff out. This is the pressure regulating valve. This connects to a water faucet and it prevents too much pressure from pushing. And if there's too much pressure through here, uh, it can bust lines in the van. Survival guide tip number one for Alaska, be sure you have a pressure regulator on the interview filler hose. One of my favorite hoses is this one crumples up pretty good. Keep it wrapped up with this simple little thing. I believe I bought this at Bucky's in the southern part of the United States. There's a famous gas station and convenience store called Bucky's and it's basically a mecca for people traveling across the United States in the southern part of Bucky's. So here we have what I put in this storage box for a weekend camping trip and I've got a couple surprises for Dawn when she gets here. When she's gone for three weeks at a time like this, when she comes back I always make it a big deal. It's a bit of a celebration. And so this time around she's been wanting a smaller solo stove to take with us on trips so she can make s'mores. The girl loves s'mores more than she loves anything else in the whole world. I bought her this little solo stove. You burn wood in here, you hold your uh, s'mores over the top of it. Super excited. And one of the things I found is this old Coleman camp oven. This thing folds out and you put it on top of an oven or a stove or a fire pit and it heats and you can bake things in this. So we're going to be baking fresh homemade biscuits in this thing and trying out the birch sap that we just finished making. You can see that in a separate video. I'm so excited to find this thing. Look how old this is and it's in new condition. So one of the other things we throw in the box is this jet boil. This is a large size jet boil. It opens up it has two burners on it, and it runs on these propane bottles. A little fold-out table made by Nemo and a couple of camp chairs. And that's what we bring inside this box. So this is the Owl Vans box, and you can see what I have in here. I've got some firewood. This is the air compressor hose, fire starting equipment here. We're going to put all this stuff in there. We're going to lock it up and get ready to go. So up here is basically my emergency toolkit. What I have in here is an extra extension cord, a funnel, air compressor hose, air compressor fitting, and emergency uh, booster cables in case we get a bed, dead battery or in case somebody else gets a dead battery. These are extra fuel cans in case we need diesel. These are made by Rotopax. And so that's how we pack. And so Owl Vans built these boxes and they do such a great job. Bravo to the John and the team at Owl Vans for doing this. I'm gonna put a link to Owl Vans in my description. And no, they don't pay me to do this. They don't know me. I've sure spent a lot of money with them. Anyway. This is how we pack. I'm super excited. As you can tell, I'm ready to get out of here. Let's go inside. I'll show you how we pack. I know all of you want to know, what do they eat? What do they eat when they're camping? So I'll show you inside. One of the reasons we love this Coachman Galleria 24 FL is because of this relatively large freezer refrigerator combo. It allows us to go for extended stays. So right now in here, I have, you know, biscuits, Sprite, yogurt, some salads for my wife, some bratwurst for me, some treats for her, some drinking water. And in the freezer, I've kind of cheated. I'm going lazy on this trip. I've got some uh, Stouffer's pre-made, you know, stuffed bell peppers, some breakfast sausage, and a few more frozen dinners. And that's what we're gonna eat this weekend. I grew up in South Louisiana around some very good Cajun cooks. And we're gonna share with you some of that cooking technique and skill and some of the great meals we can prepare in, in future videos. But for this weekend, it's all about the adventure, not the cooking. So this is what we're eating. Before every road trip, we do a safety check. I do a walk around the outside of the vehicle and I do a safety check in the vehicle to make sure we're good to go. There's a lot of moving parts on this machine, folks, and you don't want something to break down and ruin 
otherwise a fantastic vacation. It's good to do it now ahead of time. First thing I do is I check the tires. These tires are almost new. They're in good shape. I can see they're fully inflated. So the outside of the van, the awning is in. That's important. It's all the way locked in. I see nothing hanging off. The rear tire is the same thing. I've already checked the tire pressure. Good. I had to do a quick check under there. Suspension looks good. This is shut. That's good. My back racks are locked down. Nothing's gonna fly off. These boxes are locked. Padlock and locked. Traction pads are locked and locked in. They're not going anywhere. And I make sure this is shut. Make sure this is closed down here. This is where we fill up with propane when we need it. This is where we dump our fluids when we're done traveling. This is locked. This is kind of important here. This is our water fill station and I need to make sure it's locked before I go anywhere. So that's the outside. Now let's go inside. Let there be light. Before we roll down the road, refrigerator and freezer locked. If this is open and you hit a bump, this is gonna fly out and everything you've got in there is going across this van. These drawers have a locking mechanism when you push them. I go back here and I make sure all of my blinds are shut, windows are shut, TV is locked in place. This rear sofa is all the way up. And I make sure my Starlink is in the off position. And I come over to my control panel. So I'll turn my lights off. Water pump is off, generator is off, and everything looks good here. Lawn awning is locked. So we're good to go. I can check my power. Everything's green. That's a good sign. So the last thing we do before we leave is we check under the hood, but guys, I gotta tell you, there's not much to see under here. There's no dipstick to pull out and check the oil. I can look and see, you know, if these fluids are full, you know, that's full. You can't see the depth. There's not much to see in there. Air filters right here, it's all locked down. Mercedes is basically a closed system, but it's extremely low maintenance. And by the way, everything is computerized, so I can check all these systems well, basically everything from inside the van. And if there's ever a problem, I assure you the computers in this van are smarter than me. They're gonna let me know ahead of time. But I still st stick my head under here once in a while, make sure everything's okay. But there's nothing really to check like on a conventional vehicle. I get the impression Mercedes says, don't mess with our machines, leave it. The maintenance record as I think every 15,000 miles for an oil change, and they look over everything. We just had that done, so we're good to go. I'm excited. Beautiful turning in arm, ladies and gentlemen, just south of Anchorage, Alaska. This turning in arm is basically just an inlet that stops. And we're looking for beluga whales out there at that point. All right, we're at Beluga Point. And it might be misleading in here, but that wind is rocking out there. It doesn't look good. We certainly won't expect to see any whales today, but I'm going to step outside and I'm going to show you guys how rough this wind is right now. Oh! Wind and rain. Back in the van. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're doing. Change the plans. No whales today. Maybe in the morning we're going to come back by here, but I think we're going to head down to the little town of Girdwood, Alaska. We'll take you into the little town of Girdwood. I'll show you what it like, what it looks like. And I'm getting hungry. Big boy responsible thing to do would be to eat what I have in this van because I've just spent a bunch of money stocking it up. The more fun thing to do would definitely be to go into town. I can't decide. I was hoping we could cook outside tonight. We ain't doing that, folks. We are not doing that. It is raining. Welcome to Girdwood. I believe we found a camping spot for the night. It's relatively flat. This is my view for the evening. Not bad. We're at the back of a city park and I don't see any signs. I don't see there's gonna be a problem here. What I'd love to show you is how quickly this thing sets up for camping. And that's one of the things we love about this machine. And it basically, it looks like this. You shut the engine off, you make sure the power is on, pull down all the shades, switch on the Starlink, and that's it. Gets cozy in here when you shut off some of these. There we go. This is how I like it. Underneath the cabinet, what's called mood lights, also known as pimp lights. Air heater on. 70 is a little bit warm. And there's one thing I want to show you. So I thought you guys would like to see the privacy curtain in action. This is an insulated blanket, lightly insulated. This will be plenty. It's not about really insulation tonight. It's more about privacy. Front cab, very cozy. We're headed back here. So we're set up for dinner and a movie. Or in this case, dinner with living my Alaska. Even better. I'm gonna 
probably use our microwave to heat up some of those pre-prepared meals that I brought with me. And the best way to do that is to crank the generator because the microwave uses a lot of power. It's a very simple process. We will go over to the control panel here, the start button. We're gonna let that generator run for about five minutes for it to warm up and get ready before we fire up the microwave. We're gonna be good boy tonight and I'm not going to go to the restaurants without my wife. Stouffer's stuffed peppers. Those actually look pretty good. So pour a little stuffed bell peppers stuffed with beef and tomato sauce, tender ground beef instructions as if we ever need to read those. One of the beautiful benefits of having such a nice RV is having something like a make or microwave. How long did it say? I don't remember. 10 minutes? So we set it on Rose frozen vegetable for um, automatic eight minutes. We're gonna do it like that and then we'll set it for another eight and another eight if we need it. I know this is gonna be extremely delicious, super exciting. Should I grab this with my hands? Might be kind of hot. Check this out. Stuffed bell peppers and a wrench tomato sauce. It may not look like much, but it smells really good. It is green bell pepper stuffed with uh, rice and ground beef, like an Italian seasoning on it. And guys, it's super tasty. So I'm super excited. Manger. So cleanup is pretty easy in a camper van. We have a limited amount of water, limited amount of energy. So I don't go through the trouble of washing dishes and all that sort of thing. And there's a better way to do that, which is paper plates. And guys, I gotta tell you, so Stouffer's, first time I've ever eaten this, Stouffer's stuffed bell peppers are quite tasty. I am pleased with it. Definitely gonna buy that again. One of the challenges in camper vans was where you put the garbage can. There are many camper vans that don't have a garbage can at all. They hang a bag on the back of the door or something like that. Coachman was smart enough to actually give us a garbage can. I'll show you guys what we use for cleanup. These are called Crocodile Original. They're not really made to wipe your face or anything with because they're made for industrial strength, but they really clean things well. When you're living in such a small space like this, even if it's temporary, one of the challenges you have is you've got to keep everything extremely tidy, clean, and organized. Otherwise, it gets real uncomfortable and real stinky in here real quick. Okay, let's go for a walk. Luck. As you can see, we're parked at a ball field. Nobody's playing ball tonight. We're gonna go down to the side of Girdwood, go over to the little grocery store mercantile and get my wife some eggs. And if I get lucky, maybe I'll find her some boiled eggs. And we need something for dessert. Oh, you guys, an apology. I um, headed out to the grocery store with an almost dead battery as soon as I got across the road and got to the little mercantile. I turned the camera back on so you could see it. And the camera was dead. Found my sweetheart some eggs. That's good. Almond milk. Sugar cookie. What is a sugar cookie without the sugar? It's called a cracker. Our thing right now is, <laughs> yes, this is an oven. Not just a microwave, but a convection oven that's capable of baking biscuits and cookies. That's the plan anyway. So I have tin foil and I have olive oil, and I think maybe we can make a cookie sheet out of that. We'll give it a shot. So what I'm doing is wrapping this rack with tin foil, and I'm gonna spread some olive oil on the top of it so maybe the cookies won't stick. What else is there to do on a rainy night, early spring in Alaska, besides sit around and eat? It's what we did all winter, which is why I'm so out of shape and I need to lose 20 pounds. No, we're not going to cook all of these cookies. We will save some for my sweetheart for tomorrow night. We will be camping in a better spot than this. Oh look, boss lady calling us right now. Success, sugar cookies from the convection oven in the camper van. Milk, cookies, so cozy back here. Little cookies there. We're gonna watch some TV. Rough life. See you soon. Thank you so much for watching as we hunt, we harvest, we homestead, and we adventure our way through the last frontier. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos because we have so much more to share with you as we show you what it means when we say we are living my Alaska. See you next time.